Welcome to this demonstration of the Microsoft Intelligent Data Platform and its native integration with ClueDIN for master data management pieces. Let's head over and look at the MIDP stack that has been set up for this demonstration and walk through the scenario. As we mentioned, we have multiple pillars set up, including container storage or Azure Data Lake Gen 2. Within here, we have a pretty typical setup. We have a folder called raw. You can see the folders that represent all the different operational systems that we have here. And on a daily basis, using Azure Data Factory, we have pipelines that copy data from the sources and essentially have an export um, into a common file format within the APAC uh, file system raw folder. You can see some of those files um, start to show up here. As you go to the different um, subfolders, you can see that it's split up by different domains. And this is essentially just an, an, an ELT job. So it just moves the data in, in a common format and in a common place. Of course, this data lake is not really um, uh, needed for or, or um, representative of something we would want to give to the business, which is why we have clued in um, the clued in purview account um, sitting over the top. So Purview is a data catalog and data governance um, uh, set of pillars for the MIDP stack. It gives me the ability to know what data <laughs> that we have across our business. Um, and it's obviously a, <coughs> a business friendly interface to be able to search and tag and describe the assets that we have across our business, including tables. But in our case, it's going to be all the files that sit within that container storage, um, that low cost kind of uh, um, kind of ever scalable um, data lake gen 2 that we have um, in our raw folder here. So as we move along, um, of course, um, now that we have all our data in one place, now that we know what data we have with Purview, our teams are, <coughs> are off in different, <coughs> uh, different tools, such as um, Azure Machine Learning um, and Synapse, where and they can actually just directly access the same data that we had in our container storage, and they can go off and build the data warehouse and their data engineering pipelines. So of course, um, this has been running for some time and the MIDP stack here is all wired together and integrated together um, so that it adds kind of a seamless layer of being able to generate insights for my business. Now, it's probably a regular kind of use case that we have Power BI sitting over the top, um, going through our data and uh, showing some of the reports and insights to our business. Some of our end users have started to complain about the quality of the data in that they don't feel comfortable with actually utilizing it because it feels like it's got problems in it. Um, mastering problems, harmonization issues, standardization issues, and just general data quality issues as well. In fact, from the Power BI chart we have here over on the right hand side, we can see from the legend that this is probably what they're complaining about. And this is fair enough. We have all the different same job titles, but just represented differently. You can say that semantically, um, some of them are, are really identical. Um, so this means they're rejecting the use of the data that we're giving them. Let's go off and see how Cluden can complement the MIDP stack to solve this problem once and forever. So Cludin can be acquired just like um, any of the other tooling that we just saw before. So for example, if we type in master data management, we can see that the Cludin master data management system shows up directly in the marketplace. Now, like we did with Synapse and Power BI and Purview, we can choose the particular plan that we're wanting we can go and create an instance where we can choose where we want to host it, in what resource script. And about two minutes later, um, you should be ready to go off and review and create your own Cluden instance in your own tenant. After you've done this, about 15 minutes later, you should have a brand new Cluden account set up and ready to go. It looks like an Azure product. It acts like an Azure product. It feels like an Azure product. So the first thing to um, plumb this into the MIDP stack, let's head over to our settings section. And I'm just going to scroll down to some of the purview settings that I have here. Because I filled in my purview details in the install, um, they're already wired up to the instance. So all I need to do is start to turn, <laughs> turn on the different features that I'm wanting. I'll want to turn on the SIC data sources. 
This will make sure that everything that is registered as an asset in purview, clued in knows about. And I'll also want to keep a regular poll on this. So every 15, 30 seconds um, to check for new assets in purview. So clued in knows about them um, pretty much um, as soon as purview does. With these features turned on, if I head over to my data sources, we can already start to see the, all the assets that we have in our purview instance are immediately available um, within Cluedin as well. Now, considering that um, we have that data quality issue, um, our purview um, team have flagged that this particular asset here from Experian is the um, data set that's causing the issues. We know that because we have the lineage from Microsoft Purview. One of the things that's interesting already is that Cludin's taking the discussion from an asset level down to a record level. So in here, we can actually see that just by turning on that Purview integration, Cludin is also able to read in and preview the actual data within those files. In fact, we can already start to see the issues over here on the right-hand side. The first thing that we need to do with include in is to start to map the data. What we're doing here is a semantic mapping where we want to decide what do we call this data as it comes in. This would typically be referred to as a domain. Now, so that you don't have to go off and create your own domains, include in ships with out of the box support for the common data model as part of the Dataverse from Microsoft. This is over 1800 predefined domains over 42,000 keys or attributes that span across all different industries. And these can be used as accelerators to map this data into common terminology. Just so we're speaking all the same language. Once I create my mapping, Cludin will go off and start to show the lineage of what's coming in from that data set from Purview and what it's being mapped to in this common terminology. You can see it's cleaned up some of the ways that we represent these columns into a more unified and standardized way. Cluden has also automatically detected the ID and the email as unique ways to refer to these people. So, so far, it's done a really good job. We can always edit the mapping and change the names of these if we're wanting. We can also change things like the display name of the records in the Cluden platform as well. I click Next, I click Finish, and let's go over and start to push the data into the Cluedin platform. Within a couple of moments, we should see our 10 records in the platform and we'll be then ready to go and uh, work with the data. Let's head over to our search and we can see that our records are starting to flow in. We can see that Lorraine, and we can see her unified view with her details, with her metadata here. You can also see a full history log of where this data came from and this will get built up over time. So let's go ahead and start to wire this back into the data warehouse, the data engineering, and the Synapse and Power BI teams. Let's head over to our consume endpoint where we can set up what we call export targets. Export targets are a way for you to set up live streams of data from source to targets. We can see that a lot of the Azure stack is supported here. And because I have two downstream teams, I have the Synapse machine learning team, and I have the data warehouse kind of SQL server team. I'm going to set up two export targets. Let's set, start with the SQL server connector, and I'm going to connect to an instance that I've already got up and running. Let's test that connection, looks successful, and let's add that. Think of this as a possible place to send data to. While I'm at it, I'll set up my Azure Data Lake 2, uh, data Lake 2 connector, Let's go and find our um, system. This was the APAC file system. And we want to spit this out to a folder called mastered. Remember, we're going to pull the data from that raw directory. And I'd like it to end up in a folder called mastered or gold or pristine, some way to represent that the data is much more ready to use. Let's test the connection. Looks all good. And we can add that in here. Let's go off and start to tell the system what data we'd like to share with these downstream systems. Let's create a stream and let's call it person. In here, we can choose what type of data we're actually wanting to share. I'm just going to do a global filter that says where the type of data is a person. 
this is the type of data that I'd like to share. Let's confirm this and tell it where to send this data. Let's start with the SQL Server database team. I'm going to set up a table called employee. I'm going to choose the synchronized mode, which basically means whatever's in the MDM system will also be in the downstream system as well. And I can choose what type of properties I'm actually wanting to share downstream as well. Now, of course, we can, all, we can always come back and edit and change these at a later date if we're wanting. So for example, um, with our employee data, if we wanted to change it to an event log, we could do that at a later point, including handles all of that change for you. Now, the property that had that particular problem was this person.job. As you can see here, this is the property that I'm wanting to spit out to the downstream system. I'm going to finish, and before I turn it on, I actually want to get a glimpse of here's the exact data that Cludin is going to be sharing, and it's going to be sending 10 of 10 records. Looks good. Let's go and turn this on. Now, bear in mind, I haven't actually fixed any of this data yet. It's still in the same state. I'm still plumbing this all together. Let's head over to Power BI and let's get rid of this. Let's now instead connect to our SQL Server instances. And under our training, we should have a table called employee and we can see that our 10 records are starting to come out here as well with a little bit of extra metadata. Let's load the data. Let's get rid of those fields. And let's take the job and put it back on here. You can see pretty much exactly the same result, but we've now wired the systems together. Let's head over and set up one more outgoing stream so our data science team can also get all this nice mastered harmonized data. Let's set up the same filter. We're only wanting to share person data. This time, I'd like to send it to the Azure Data Lake team instead. So let's call this employees. And let's spit out that job title. Finish. Data looks good. And let's activate it. Good. So let's head over to Power BI and let's set up our Power BI chart to refresh automatically every five seconds. In this way, we can simulate the real-time nature of Cludin as we fix data within the platform. So now that we've got the plumbing in place, let's head over and start to fix this problem. I'm going to want to filter by people, and then I'm going to want to clean this data. Let's fix that job. It sets up a cleaning project for a data steward. We can choose what particular properties we're actually wanting to clean. Then this will go off and create us a sandboxed environment where our data stewards can play around with all different ways to fix this data. Now, instead of having to fix this manually, you can use the built-in tools from Cludin to cluster the values. This will go off and use different techniques to start to identify and suggest the actual fixtures to the data quality issues. You can see in this case, it's done a rather good job at fixing accounting and software dev. But over on the left-hand side, you can see there's still one particular issue that I have here. That's usually just a matter of cycling through the other types of possible suggestions, finding the one you're after, merging, and now our data looks much more harmonized. Let's close the, cl the, the cleaning application down, and let's commit these changes back to the platform. Now, there's a couple of things that have happened. First of all, if we head over to our Power BI chart, you can see that because we're refreshing every five seconds, that data has actually just changed right in front of our eyes. The next thing that's happened is our data is actually clean in the MDM platform as well. So if we head over to Lorraine and see her properties, we can see that her job title is now the software development. And if we view the history, you can actually see the history of changes and when it happened as well. Finally, if we head over to our rule builder, 
you can see that the data has actually automatically built rules off the back of those cleaning exercises. If we take any of these rules, we can see that in plain English, we can understand that where a person's job equals software dev, let's set it to software developer. You can probably imagine this has now patched that problem from ever happening again, no matter what system the data comes from. So now if I head over to my Synapse team and into my master directory, our data science team should be happy as well as they've just received the employee files and all the changes in that as well. So now, in addition to the MIDP stack, we've now got clued in making sure that we're delivering high quality data around to our business users. And we now have a process in place for making this data better and better over time. Of course, all the lineage and changes to this data as it happens within clued in also makes its way back to Microsoft Purview as well. If we just look at an example here, the schema of the files is written back to Purview, but also this full end-to-end -end lineage of the data being imported into clued in, mapped into a common entity, and then moved out to these downstream systems as well.